Dry ice, a frozen chunk of carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is special in that at standard pressure, it doesn't have a liquid phase. It goes straight from being a solid to a gas, hence dry ice. Welcome to On the Shoulders of Science, I'm Ben. If you question the why about things in this universe and you want to learn about random and interesting scientific facts and concepts, then consider subscribing and clicking the bell to be notified when a new video comes out. Okay, dry ice. It goes straight from being a solid to a gas because unlike water, it doesn't have much of force holding the individual molecules of carbon dioxide together. But that doesn't mean it can never be a liquid. This is called a phase diagram, and it shows whether carbon dioxide will be a solid, liquid, or gas at a given temperature and pressure. You see, at standard pressure, carbon dioxide goes straight from being a solid to a gas at negative 109 degrees Fahrenheit. But if the pressure is above about 5.1 atmospheres in this range of temperatures, the molecules get warm enough to break out of their rigid crystalline structure, but the pressure is high enough to force them together into a liquid phase. So you can have liquid CO2 in these CO2 cartridges or in a CO2 fire extinguisher. But under standard pressure, you can't have liquid CO2. It just goes straight from a solid to a gas, a process called sublimation. But then this got me thinking, what about the opposite of sublimation? What about the process of going from a gas and cooling down straight to a solid? Well, as it turns out, that is called deposition. And then I thought, well, CO2 can freeze or deposit at around negative 109 degrees Fahrenheit. And that's cold, but it's not that cold. Antarctic winters can occasionally dip below negative 110. And then I thought, well, CO2 is in the air. So if it gets cold enough, does that mean CO2 can just freeze out of the air? Yes. Yes, it does. And that's just crazy. Under the right conditions in Antarctica, you could just walk outside and there'd be a layer of dry ice over the ice ice. Imagine that. But of course, I'm not the first person to think of this. There was actually a proposal to remove CO2 from the atmosphere by freezing it out of the air in Antarctica to help with climate change. Essentially, the plan was to put giant freezers in Antarctica that would intake the air and cool it using liquid nitrogen until it just froze out of the air. And luckily, all other gases commonly found in the atmosphere have freezing points much lower than that of CO2. So only CO2 would be removed. The only problem with this is that there is a lot of CO2 in the atmosphere. Each year, humans release about 36 billion tons of carbon dioxide. This is a comparison of what 1 billion tons of solid CO2, dry ice, looks like compared to the Empire State Building. Yeah. So not only do you have to input all the energy and resources to freeze the CO2, but you also have to figure out how to store this wild amount of dry ice and make sure you can contain it so it doesn't just sublime back into the atmosphere. Overall, I think this method of removing CO2 from the atmosphere is a little impractical, at least for now, but I still think it's pretty cool to think about. Thank you for watching this video. Make sure to subscribe if you want to see more. And if you like dry ice, you might also like this video I made on how a piece of dry ice can hover on the ground. Link in the description. Anyways, I hope you learned something, and I'll see you next time.